to be uh, with you, uh, and actually welcomed to be with you, because I'm part of an institution that has 10% approval rate, so Barbara <laughs> and I have a place to be tonight with nice people, and we feel pretty good. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's an incredibly important election, and a lot of us were feeling pretty good, and we're not going to get back on our heels after the first debate, and we got to get back in the game, and Joe Biden got us back in the game. But there is so, he did, he did a great job. And the president's going to do a great job as well. But I want to say a couple of things about what's at stake. You know, what we take for granted in Vermont is not part of their deal in Washington. We take for granted that if you're working uh, for the betterment of the community, whether you're Republican or Democrat, your agenda is about trying to make a better community or a better state. We take it for granted that the person who disagrees with us uh, has a point of view that is worth listening to. And we actually have, I think, a point of view that if you, your competition is for the election, but cooperation and progress is after you get elected. That's what you're elected to do. In Washington, we've got folks that are fighting for failure. I mean, when Mitch McConnell, as the leader of the minority in the Republican Party in the, in the U.S. Senate, says that his job is to make the president of the United States a one-term president. That's somebody who's fighting for failure. And they need business. And when we have a budget that's put forward by Paul Ryan, let me talk about this, because this is like the biggest bait and switch we've seen. His stated purpose in life, and I work with him a lot, but his stated public purpose in life is to reduce the debt. You know what? That's a worthy objective. How you do it matters, but that is a worthy objective. But if that's your purpose, why when you were a junior member of Congress, did you vote, did you vote for the Iraq war on the credit card? Did you vote for Afghanistan on the credit card? Did you vote for prescription drugs on the credit card? Did you vote for those push tax cuts? So you voted for literally every single policy that led to this deficit, and when it came to the banks, you gave them the free ride. You, get rid, you got rid of Glass-Steagall. And of course, that was the beginning and the end of any kind of restraint in Wall Street. And all of those things contributed to the meltdown in this huge deficit that we have. Then, when you become the chair of the Budget Committee and you're a senior member of Congress, and you actually have a chance and authority to make a difference, and you can design the budget to bring down the debt, the budget you propose, yes, it does cut education, it does cut health care, it does make Medicare a voucher, it does get rid of scientific research, it does a lot of really bad things and cuts a lot of programs, but you know what it also does? Raises the debt by six trillion dollars in ten years, okay? Six trillion dollars, why does it do that? Because it propels Pentagon spending up, 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 and it doubles down on tax cuts to the point where George Romney has a 1% effective tax rate. All right? So what does that tell you? This is not about debt. You know what? We're pretty frugal in Vermont. Some might say cheap, 